This video will show you how to begin programming your Board of Education Parallax Revision C using a PBASIC chip on a Chromebook. If you are using a Windows or Macintosh computer, please refer to the help document for the steps associated with those operating systems. The steps are basically the same but they have a few extra steps. In the Robolopes Bobot training folder, please open using a Chromebook for programming in PBASIC. At this point, you should have installed the Parallax IDE software for your Chrome. Please scroll down. Hopefully you know some of the shortcut keys on most Chromebooks or if you're using this on a Windows or Macintosh computer. Some examples include Control A for Select All, Control C for Copy, Control X for Cut, and Control V for Paste. In the tutorial, please scroll all the way down to page number five in the PDF or page number two according to the pages in the document. At this point, we have a Board of Education serial. You can see the live webcam showing our Board of Education on the right. We know we have a serial because we have this here. However, we are going to use a USB in just a moment. Let's take a look at the board and get familiar with its parts. In area number one, we have a nine volt battery clip or in area number two, a barrel jack. For each of these, you can use a nine volt battery and you can plug it in like this. Or if you have four AA batteries, you can use the four AA batteries that look like this, and then plug it into your Board of Education like this. Make sure that your batteries are fresh and new. If your batteries are old, they may not supply enough voltage. A nine volt battery has more voltage than the chip actually needs. However, if you use old batteries or rechargeable AA batteries, they may only put out around 4.8 volts and you need a minimum of five. Also make sure that when you put your batteries into the battery holder, you need to make sure they are facing the correct direction. Remember, the spring is where the negative end of the battery goes. Number three is your voltage regulator. The voltage regulator is shown here. For the entire board, we need only five volts. Remember, voltage is equal to the amount of current times the amount of resistance. We only need one amp of current maximum for the sockets and pins labeled VDD. VDD is actually shown right here, which is below these two uh, servo headers. 
Just here below the voltage regulator is the power indicator LED. When you have your batteries plugged in, make sure that the voltage is high enough for the light to be rather bright. If it seems a little dim, your batteries are not supplying enough voltage and you will not be able to program your Board of Education. If you are not using your board, make sure to switch it off. Going back to the servo headers here, a servo are the motors essentially that will be used to turn the wheels. Now below these and above them, you will see little labels. For VDD, you can see 12, 13, 14, and 15. This applies to the numbers shown here on the left for the breadboard. You need to remember to use the correct pins when we start doing the servo headers. Number six is the power header times three. Again, as shown, there are three power headers with three different labels. VDD, VIN, and VSS. You can see in the description what each one does. VDD connects to plus 5 VDC. VIN connects directly to the power supplied to the board. And VSS connects to 0V or ground. This white area is called a breadboard. A breadboard allows for quick inputs of plugging in different components. For example, we could take an LED light and plug each one in to either a power area or the breadboard itself. That will be shown a little later. Number eight. This is shown on the left side of the breadboard. You need to pay attention to these letters and numbers because this is how you're going to tell the program where to provide power. App mod header times one. This is located directly in the middle of the board here. This is another area for providing power. The reset button located directly beneath the app mod header is used to cycle programs. Basically, if you put a program into the chip and you want it to start over, you can click this little button. The three-way power switch shown here, if it is zero, then that means that there is no power being supplied. If you switch it to the number one, then you can see the light turns on. This is essentially the programming power. This allows you to send a program to the chip. If you put it on to number two, 
This allows the program to run and sends power to the breadboard, the servos, and other areas of the Board of Education. Do make sure that you turn off to zero when you're not using it. Number 12 is a socket for basic stamp. You can see in the picture in the document what it looks like without the um, basic stamp chip inserted. In mine, I actually have the chip inserted already. All you do is gently push the chip into its appropriate pins. Make sure that the writing shown here is uh, the correct direction, meaning you can read it. It's not upside down. Please do not remove this chip. This chip is not meant to be removed unless it is broken. Lastly is the serial programming connector. This is shown over here. Now, because we do not tend to have serial ports anymore, we need to adapt it to a USB. The USB adapter looks like this. Anytime you're using the board, please plug in the serial adapter. And now you're ready to keep going. Please make sure you know which Board of Education you are using. On the bottom, shown here, you can see that ours shows revision C. Make sure you go to the correct page, now going to page number 7, according to the bottom page uh, numbers on the document. We have already established we are using a USB to serial adapter, so we can go to the setup on page 8. If you have not yet done this, please make sure you have fixed the little rubber feet to the bottom of your board. They go in the little circles. This is important because any little static spark can cause the board to short out and no longer be usable. At this point, you are all set up for the board itself. Now you can begin starting your first programming. Again, you need to scroll down until you reach the first programming page, because these are the other revisions of the board. On page number 27, or in the PDF itself is page 30, your first program. Once you open the Chrome app on your computer, you should be ready to start typing in your first program. Again, if you don't remember, you can go ahead and launch it directly from the Chrome Web Store or by typing in Chrome colon slash slash apps. And then you should see the apps here. Now, keep your document open because copying and pasting will make this a lot faster, but you are welcome to type if you want. What you're going to do is start 
with the example program. The document shows you exactly what to do, but I will go ahead and show you what to do as well. The tiny little apostrophes mean that this is a comment. This is not necessarily something used for programming. Now, the training document indicates that you should have the stamps in class first program BS2 shown above the stamp BS2 lines that are already there. It's not required to do that. So let's go ahead and save our file according to what the training document shows. Training document calls this first program.bs2. So let's go ahead and put that in. And click Save As. You will see on the left that first program.bs2 is now in your list under the examples folder. If you want to have your own project folder, you are welcome to start one. So what you can do is click on that folder and then you can say maybe your training. Again, it really doesn't matter what you do with this. You're welcome to do any folder you want. I'm gonna go ahead and click Save File again because it will bring this file under my training folder. Either way, it's completely up to you. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste all of the example program in the blue area. You can't have the stamp in PBASIC again, so I'm going to highlight this and then paste it. Now, if you are using a Chromebook or anything with a touchpad, you need to use a two finger click, or if you're using a mouse, do a right click and then paste. Or on your keyboard, you can do Control and V. Let's take a look at each of these parts. Stamps in class first program.bs2 is used to show that this is what we're doing. It's just a way to send a message to yourself so you know what's going on. You can input any of these. Um, apostrophes and comments at the end of any line you want. The next comment says basic stamp sends message to debug terminal. The debug terminal is located at the bottom of your screen. Pause 1000. Now, you do not have to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and put a comment. Pause 1000 means 1000 milliseconds, which is equal to one second. Remember, milli means one thousandth or one over 1000. So if there are 1000 milliseconds, this is equal to one second. What we are telling the board to do is to pause for one second. The reason for this is because we do not want your computer thinking that this board is a plug and play device similar to a mouse or something like that. What we want is for the computer to understand that this is a separate device. Now, first you have the word pause. Pause simply means telling the program to wait. Debug tells the program that you want the board to send some sort of message to your debug terminal on the bottom. End means that you want the program to stop after this last line. 
If you do not put the word end, it probably will end anyway. But you can also put in other endings such as loop to make it go around again. Because we want this to actually stop, we're going to leave the word end. OK. At this point, you are going to need to plug in your USB cable. So make sure that you use the USB cable supplied with the Board of Education. Plug it in to the USB port. Make sure you have it the correct direction. And then go ahead and plug it into your computer. At this point, you should see a green light appear on your USB serial adapter. Next, you are going to make sure to save your program. So click on the plus button and click save file. Then it should say saved successfully. Then you're going to click on download. Now, if you click on download before turning the device on, nothing will happen. You may see an error that looks something like this. Serial connection not found, no basic stamps found. If you forget to turn it on, simply turn it on to the first switch. You should see the power light turn on and you can click refresh. If everything works uh, you should see that download window disappear. And then, since you have a debug line, you're going to see on the bottom the message that was sent to your basic stamp, which is what you typed. Hello, it's me, your basic stamp, which should match what you have in red up above. What you have done is you have sent a message to your um, board specifically to the basic chip here. The chip's been told to send the message after one second back through the USB to your computer and then send to the debug terminal the message you indicated. If you want to do it again, you are welcome to push the reset button. and you'll see the message appear again. Now notice that I didn't switch to number two. It's not necessarily required to switch to the second one because we are not necessarily running any servos or anything yet. Okay, we did our first program. The training document goes through everything basically that I just told you. Now, what happens if something doesn't work? Well, let me show you some of the troubleshooting steps. The first one is maybe your light is not bright enough. Let me show you an example of that. Notice how my light does not seem to be as bright. When this happens and I click on download, it shows that there is no serial connection found. 
If you do this on a Windows or Macintosh computer, you might see um, a couple of messages that say yes and yes, indicating that the connection is there. But for some reason, it's just not working. This is because you don't have enough power. If your batteries are too old, or if you put them in the wrong direction um, for your AA batteries, you may see this error. Just make sure that you have them plugged in the right way, meaning the negative side in these springs, and make sure that all your batteries are new and have enough voltage to at least equal five volts total. Besides this, there really are not too many errors. The only other thing that could have happened was a spark may have fried your little board here. If you have any errors with the USB chip, such as this light not turning on, the red light not flashing when you send a program to the board, or things like that, there may be some damage somewhere. Okay, let's do one more program. Debug formatters and control characters. A debug formatter is a code word you can use to make the message the basic stamp sends look a certain way in the debug terminal. DEC is an example of a formatter that makes the debug terminal display a val decimal value. An example of a control character is CR, which is used to send a carriage return to the debug terminal. The text or numbers that come after a CR will appear on the line below characters that came before it. You can modify your program so that it contains more debug commands along with some formatters and control characters. Let's go ahead and try this set of lines of code. Debug CR, what's 7 times 11? Debug CR, and remember to have your commas. The answer is, and then debug, now DEC for your decimal value, seven, and then this is an asterisk, which is located by pushing shift and the number eight, and then 11. This is an operator for math. This means times. Okay, so once again, I'm going to copy and put this directly into my program. Now you can change the name of the program if you want, or you can just highlight the debug area you did earlier and then paste this in. Again, make sure to save your file. Turn on your Board of Education to the number one setting. You may see the program from earlier run again, and that's okay and then click download. Go ahead and click the off on the zero switch. Now you'll see in the debug terminal, what seven times 11, which is what you asked it to write earlier. And then again, you asked it to write the answer is, and then directly after that, it put the answer for seven times 11. So your chip can do simple math programs on its own. Now, if you would like to know all of the debug commands, what you can do is go to the Parallax website and it will have um, 
the pbasic command reference. And so it can show you all of the debug examples and things like that. OK, the last part of this introduction is an introduction to ASCII code. Now, this thing wants you to just check it out, but let me go ahead and show you what this is about. ASCII includes 128 characters. Each character is noted by a specific number. So if you put, let's say, the number 32, it will do a space. If you do the number 65, it will do capital A, 97, lowercase a, and so forth. So let's go ahead and try a new example program shown here, ASCII name.bs2. Again, new file save file ASCII capital name dot bs2 and save then I'm going to go ahead and copy what is in the blue box here replace everything there and paste okay at this point you can then save your file again turn on your Board of Education to the number one, which it may do the program from earlier, and then click on download. What it's showing is basic stamp two. The reason for this is because 66 is the capital B, 65 is the capital A, and so forth. Remember that the spaces are one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's the sixth character. So 32 is a space. Remember to turn off your Board of Education when you're done with it. And you've completed your first ASCII code. So what they want you to do next is to basically do whatever you want with spelling or writing letters using ASCII code. Now you can do the pick 12 random numbers between 32 and 126 and go for it. Or you can use the chart and spell your own name, which is kind of the whole point to the file name. So let's go ahead and give it a try. For example, my name is Hoskins, my last name. So I'm going to go ahead and start figuring it out. So first off for me is H, so 72. So again, I'm just going to replace the debug characters. Now I want lowercase o, so 111. Lowercase s, 115, 7, 105, 10, and 115 again. I'm going to save the file. Make sure to turn on my board again to number one. Click download. and it spelled it out. Perfect. Okay, at this point, you finished your first set of programming. Make sure that when you're done, you turn off the power, you remove the battery pack, First, you remove the USB cable directly from your uh, 
USB adapter. And then you are ready to store it. Do make sure that you remove the USB adapter and put it back in its static bag. And you place the Board of Education also in the static bag. Remember, do not remove the chip because it is already set and ready to go for the future.